Following its issuance of a seafood HACCP guidance in December, the US FDA issued the latest edition of the Fish and Fishery Products Hazards and Controls in June 2022. I am your TAG Talks host, Lisa Lupo, and today I'm talking with TAG Food Safety Director, Ranjit Klar, about the guidance and resources for seafood processor compliance. Good afternoon, Ranjit. Hello, Lisa, how are you? I am doing just wonderful, and you today? Very good, thank you for asking. Good, so let's just start. Can you give us a brief overview of this guidance from FDA? Yeah, so Lisa, as you rightly said, this is a FDA's Fish and Fishery Products Hazard and Control Guidance, um, latest version, June 2022. So basically, uh, like every other uh, regulatory guidance for food safety, um, there are always, always the procedures for safe and sanitary processing and importing of products. In this case, we are talking about fish and fishery product which is in accordance to the regulation 21 CFR 123, which is also called CFIA. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, it's not CFIA. This is <laughs> seafood HACCP regulation, which requires uh, to prepare the processes to prepare a HACCP plan for fish and fishery products that a processor produces or handles, which is intended to um, uh, have a kind of uh, uh, subsequent steps to analyze the hazards. So the FDA Fish and Fishery Product Hazards and Control Guidance is given to industry to assist the processors for hazard analysis, critical control plant, plant uh, point plants. And this guide actually is more than 450 pages long, and it is pretty good uh, uh, guide to refer to. And uh, it includes 18 steps of how to complete a hazard analysis and develop a HACCP plan. And basically the more I added value is there that with the latest edition, there are some changes in the environmental chemical contaminants, including pesticide in chapter nine. Okay. So um, can you tell us about some of the tools that are available to help um, seafood processors when they're trying to develop this? So Lisa, as uh, the tools are very important because the guides are there as a reference to processors. However, there are always an interpretation, uh, the language, the regional um, uh, differences in terms of where the processors are. So always tools are very, very well needed to make sure wherever the seafood processors are, they are following the requirements and meeting the meeting the the regulations. So the first of the foremost tool is the training. Uh, it is with the standard curriculum under the seafood has of training, uh, uh, which is uh, designed by APDO. And this training is uh, basically um, one of the main tool. We will talk about this in detail. Additionally, other tools, which I can, uh, I can see that is very, very valuable that uh, we need to make sure that the, whoever is doing the hazard analysis is aware of uh, the product specific hazards, like there are potential vertebrate species, species in the seafood, like anchovies, amberjack, um, um, uh, amberjack and uh, barracuda. And there are some potential invertebrate species uh, related hazards, like we talk about making a uh, handling of the clams, the crabs, the cuttlefish, lobster, mussels and shrimps. Uh, on top of that, there are some process related hazards because we all eat seafood in a different forms like they can be a breaded, battered fish, they can be cooked, drained, canned fish, they can be fermented, pasteurized, raw, smoked fish. Um, some fish is used as a topping for the salads and dippings and sandwiches. So very, very important is the person who is doing the team who's doing the, the hazard analysis they should know what are the process specific and product specific hazards they need to understand. And this will lead to um, just one last point that um, what are the different pathogens associated to species, allergen issues, the risk of pathogens in processing handling, risks of this decomposition. So we as a tag specialize in doing the product specific and process specific hazard analysis of fish and fishery products based on the 
FDA seafood as a guide. So I think these are the very valid tools. The one is training, one is the knowledge and understanding of the specific hazards. Okay. So if I'm going through training, what are what's kind of the primary purpose? What are the things I'm going to learn in that training? Very, very good question. Uh, so the primary purpose of the AFDO, which is Alliance HACCP training protocol, uh, is to assist the implementation of HACCP programs in a commercial and regulatory settings. Um, FDA do not really require or recommend a specific uh, uh, model of the HACCP training, but they really appreciate that if there is a standardized um, a pro program which can facilitate the hazard analysis and it, it does cover everything in the hazard analysis and none of the regulatory requirements are missed, that will be the best way approach to for the processors to meet the requirements. The courses are developed for training in the basic hazard programs and also related sanitation control procedures. The primary audience for this training can be anybody who's working in the seafood industry, seafood processing, importing industry, regulatory officials, or any companies who are importing to United States. And the basic seafood course teaches the principles of HACCP and empowers the processors to develop HACCP program, which is again, specific to each seafood product and specific to each processing activities they handle. Okay. And TAG provides this training? Yes, so this, this is a very, very important question because we <laughs> recently had upgraded our training program um, in TAG. I myself and a few others, we are the train the trainer for Seafood HACCP uh, uh, program and we are approved trainers uh, by AFTO to do those trainings to the industry. And this includes that we can do the trainings for uh, basic seafood course, which is a two and a half days to three days course in person. And also we offer virtual as well. And uh, there is a separate segment for um, uh, see, uh, sanitation uh, uh, training. So we have options to follow as outlined by AFDO on how can we facilitate the trainings. And we in-house in has a hands-on knowledge and experience in working with the seafood industry in the fish and fishery products and also we are certified trainers. Great. Thank you so much for your insights on this, Ranji. Um, really hope that this is helping our audience to understand a little bit more about this. So are there any other key recommendations though that you would want to extend to our audience? Right, so I, I really wanted to uh, emphasize on, uh, to ensure that um, the, the design of HACCP is, is not um, built or maintained by somebody who's not fully aware of the product specific and process specific hazards. Um, it, it starts from uh, any typical um, food safety team, HACCP team uh, in the processing facility, or uh, any activity you do around the seafood industry. So the recommendation is that this must be um, one person at least per shift should be trained with the has a standardized curriculum so that there is always a backup there is always somebody there behind in case somebody is not available and second is the hazard analysis uh, is a is a group approach it cannot be managed by one person so more the merrier so if you have a good strong team of has a and you wanted to make sure they are all equally trained. So this HACCP training, seafood HACCP training is one of the best bet to start. And at in the tag and also using the standardized curriculum, we will use the product specific uh, examples. We have the tools to use to do the group exercises, which will cover uh, specific to your product, specific to your processing activities as an example. And we will use that as, as a training tool. So my suggestion is always have to have a backup of the personnel who are handling the hazards in your facility. All right, that's a great tip and it's something I think uh, very important to remember. You never know when someone will be out for any reason. Yeah. And you would certainly hate for FDA to choose that day to stop by as well. So. Yes, right, that's good. So thank you again, Ranji. We really hope that this session of Tag Talks has provided our audience with insights on FDA's guidance and seafood HACCP training. 
and know that you can call on Ranji or on any of the tag experts for assistance and information at any time. And as always, be sure to click subscribe to stay up to date on all things food safety and public health from tag experts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.